Jesus prevail. Where the Israelites were unfaithful, could Jesus be constant? There in that in-between place, the place of promise, but promise not yet fulfilled, Jesus was tempted by Satan. We have no details of that in Mark. Uh, he was with the wild beasts, doesn't really, we don't really know what that's about. It could be about this new kingdom where the lion and the lamb lay together, uh, where all live in harmony. I think more likely though, this is speaking of the hostile forces of oppo opposition uh, Jesus faced. But whatever, he was not alone. It says there the angels waited on him. As we move into this second pandemic Lent, it feels to me, it may feel to you, that we, I don't actually feel we left the last one properly. Um, we're still in that in-between space. We can see promise ahead, but still we're stuck here where we are. But as for Israel, as for Jesus, the promised land, God's kingdom is near. And our role is to remain faithful in that. There's a verse in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 15, speaking of Jesus, uh, the writer says this, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weakness, but we have one who is, in every respect, was tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In our time of need, in our struggle against temptation and opposition, we have one to whom we can turn. Who understands? Who understands this in-between time, this awaiting of the promise, and has promised all that we need to prevail? Then we come to the third picture. Don't worry, we're nearly there now. Verse 14 and 15. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So here we're entering the promise. As Jesus goes off into Galilee, he proclaims the kingdom is near. When he talks about the kingdom being near there, um, if you, if you remember, John said of Jesus that the one is, is near, and then Jesus appeared. As Jesus goes through Galilee, the kingdom appears where he is. And in a sense, whilst we live in an in-between time, you know, we're waiting for this promised kingdom to be fulfilled. In Jesus, we also live in a fulfilled time. Whilst God's kingdom has not yet fully been revealed, yet here, as we say yes to Jesus, it is here, it's fulfilled, it's now. And we are called to live as citizens of that kingdom. How do we do that? There's something in those words, repent and believe the good news. Repentance here is not so much talking about saying sorry or feeling sorry. The word actually has more of the meaning of having your, of changing your mind, or more accurately, having your mind changed. Uh, Romans 2, sorry, so Romans 12, 2 says this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And I think Lent is a great time because it reminds us to just step back and step away from the regular routines which kind of just lead us from one thing to the next without, often without thinking too much. And reminds us that as Christians living as in God's kingdom, 
our lives should be orientated to him, living for him. And we get that constant reminder through Lent as we do the Live Lent course or Bible studies or whatever. We're, we're constantly reminded of that. And that word believe as well, I think a, a clearer understanding is not to kind of assent to a set of beliefs. It's more about trusting, trust in the good news. Trust that in and through Jesus, God's kingdom rule is transforming those who say yes. Trust that God's love and approval is upon all of his children, whether they feel it or not. Trust that we are, we are in an in-between time. We know that God's promises are sure. And trust that he provides all that we need to live faithfully. Let's be quiet for a moment, shall we, and we'll pray. Father God, as we move through this season of Lent, we pray that uh, you would help us to use it wisely, that we would be constantly turning, uh, turning towards you, longing for you to do that work of transformation. As we live in this in-between time, Lord, help us not to lose hope to trust in your promises that you've prepared so much more for those who love you. We pray in Jesus' name.